Now tonight, if the Lord will, we're going to talk to you from this subject. Do you know the power of his resurrection? A lot of people, uh, many people don't know the power of his resurrection. Uh, there is power that comes along with walking this Christian walk. Yeah. When I say power, the victory that we have in this world is the power of his resurrection. Uh, we often say that Jesus Christ died for our sins. But if dying was all he had done, then all we would have is pardon for our sins. Yeah. He was raised again for our life. Yeah. And if we are buried with him, then we can rise with him. And we live with him in the same power that he was raised from the dead. Yeah. So many people, they walk around knowing that their sins are forgiven, but they don't know the power of his resurrection. They don't know that they can overcome this flesh. They don't know that there's victory in walking in this, this life. And that victory, of course, is in the power of his resurrection. Now, uh, we'll start reading at verse 1 of the third chapter of Philippians. We're just going to talk to you for a little bit tonight. It says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Now, uh, right off the bat, Paul is establishing what we're supposed to rejoice in. We rejoice in the Lord. We don't, uh, we don't rejoice in what we've done or what, uh, how we think we've, we've uh, behaved to the point where we uh, are accepted of God. But we always rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Verse 2 says, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Now, in the, in the Bible, in the Jesus' day, the dogs were the Gentiles. But uh, after Jesus was resurrected, the dogs basically just become any un unbeliever. Amen. Because he put us all in the same body. So we no longer are, 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 are uh, unbelievers. Gentiles can be believers as well. And so the dogs, when he referred to the dogs, he's talking about any unbeliever. Whether you're Jew or Gentile. He said, beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Now, the concision, he's talking about the circumcision. But he's not talking about the circumcision that when it, you know, uh, those that are circumcised in, in the heart. He's talking about the circumcision, those that are circumcised in the flesh. Not, not only that, but those that glory in the circumcision of their flesh. Verse 3 says, for we are the circumcision. Now, when, here when he speaks of circumcision, he's talking about circumcision of the heart which worship God in the spirit yeah. see now if you circumcise in the heart you're going to worship God in the spirit yeah. uh, there's a difference uh, in, in coming to church and clapping our hands and rejoicing in the Lord and uh, uh, sing, singing songs and feeling good about those songs there's a difference in, in, in that in worshiping God in the spirit See, we believe uh, worshiping God is coming to church and singing songs and, and doing those things, but that's not what worshiping God is. That is that's, been, uh, that's an outward worship. The Pharisees did that. Worshiping God is, is bound down to them in your everyday walk. That's, that's where the worship starts. Now, when we come to church, we sing and we clap our hands and we rejoice the way we do because we're worshiping God in our daily walk. That's why we sing and, and rejoice is because we, we're worshiping God in the spirit. In other words, we, we know that we have the victory. We, we know the, the power of his resurrection. And so we sing about it and we praise God about it. And so there's a difference in, in just going through the motions of clapping our hands and singing songs and really feeling it deep within your spirit and knowing that you have the victory in Jesus Christ. You know, when you think about what the Lord have done for us, it's easy to worship the Lord. It's easy. You're not ashamed to, to uh, sing to the Lord. And, and, you know, we don't have to, and the Lord don't want us to wait to church to do it. We can sing in our homes and, you know, on our jobs or wherever, you know, wherever we are. Wherever you are, that's where you worship the Lord at. 
Not that you have to make a scene, but you do it because you are rejoicing in God, that, because you know that you are in Jesus Christ. Amen. It says, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Now, that's a big statement there. <laughs> I know it seemed like, oh, me and Brother Junior are always harping on this. And I imagine we're just going to have to keep doing it until we understand what this is saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No confidence in the flesh. Now, uh, if you are worshiping God in the spirit, uh, naturally so, you don't have any confidence in the flesh. Uh, people that have confidence in the flesh, they look and mind the natural things. So if you have confidence in the flesh, uh, as long as everything is going good in your flesh, you're going to worship God. But as soon as some kind of attack come against your body, if you have confidence in the flesh, then you feel like, well, the Lord doesn't desert you if, if something happens, start happening in your, in your flesh. Yes. Or if you start getting sick or whatever the case is. You feel like God doesn't desert you. Or say, for instance, if you're having hard times or whatever the case is, if you have confidence in the flesh, if you're living after the flesh, then your, your whole Christian life is going to be just up and down, up yeah. and down, up and down. Yeah. When, when things are going good, naturally so, then you're up and you come to church praising God. Yeah. When things go bad and it seems like God that deserted you, then you go down and you're down and up. You think, you know, and then now the devil got you believing maybe there is no God. Yeah. Or maybe God loved other people more than he loved you. Yeah. That comes from having confidence in the flesh. Yeah. Now, regardless of what, now we, if, let's look at Jesus Christ. When he came to this earth, he didn't have no house. No. You know, uh, no regular transportation. He mostly walked everywhere he went. Man. He lived life, he was a poor man. And uh, he suffered a lot of things. He was always uh, picked on. And uh, people were always there at his meetings, mostly not to hear what he had to say, but to listen to what he was saying so they can contradict him and, and stand to accuse him. Yeah. And so, uh, naturally so, it looked like God didn't love him. Naturally so, if, if he had confidence in the flesh, he would, be, he would have the kind of mind and say, well, God, why I got to go through all of this? Why am I poor and there's other people that's, that's, that's rich? Why am, I, you know, why am I buffeted in the flesh or whatever the case is and other people seem to be doing so well and here I am trying to serve you with all my heart. And all these things are happening to me and people are coming against me in these things. And if you have confidence in the flesh, that's what your mindset is. Yeah. You're always looking at what's going on in the natural. Yeah. But Jesus said those that, if we're born in the Spirit, we're supposed to be worshiping God in the Spirit. That's right. That means no matter what's going on in our everyday life, we have confidence yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's why I said rejoice in Christ Jesus. We don't rejoice in our flesh. No. We don't rejoice because, praise the Lord, I got an unexpected $300 check in the mail today. Man. That type of person, you're going to always be up and down. You ever known anybody like that? Yeah. <laughs> One day they worshiping God and just praising Him and hopping all over the place. Man. And so, as soon as the devil bring an attack, the next day they just down and ready to commit suicide. Man. That's having confidence in the flesh. And Jesus Christ don't want us to have confidence in the flesh. Now, uh, uh, to bring that over, uh, basically what he's saying is when you have that kind of mind, you also look at uh, 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 the law as being your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, when I speak of the law, uh, I'm not talking about, not necessarily talking about the old commandment law. I'm talking about the law that we give ourselves. Yeah. And we start judging that by, we start judging ourselves in those things, in those matters, with our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. So let's say, for instance, uh, we start out uh, wanting to serve the Lord and things, somebody give a life to the Lord, and they know what the Bible says about certain things and, and uh, that they shouldn't be doing. And uh, uh, sometimes you do things for so long, they become a habit, and uh, you just don't break them off like that. You know, you had to you had to grow and learn to do those things. And just like you had to learn to do those things, you're going to have to unlearn to do them. Yeah. You know, and so uh, uh, you spend your time uh, uh, looking at yourself and, and, and knowing where you're coming up short at in the Lord. 
And the whole time, and, and that's what we call having confidence in the flesh. Is when you judge your relationship by, with God by what you're doing in your flesh. Amen. Now, uh, if you keep uh, coming back, we'll, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about this, about how uh, since we're buried in Jesus Christ, we're dead to sins. We'll continue to, to bring this out, how this, all, how this all goes together. But for right now, uh, what I want us to see is, is uh, regardless of where you're found at right now, tonight, uh, that's not based on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Man. Your righteousness don't come by what you can do in your flesh. No. Your righteousness come by faith yeah. in what Jesus Christ did. Man. If righteousness came by how good you act and how much you smile and how much you love people, <laughs> if your righteousness come by that, then Jesus Christ coming here and dying for our sins is in vain. Man. Yeah. Now, since I've said that, let me say this. Uh, Jesus Christ wants us to crucify our flesh. Yeah. He wants us to be dead to sins. Man. But no matter how dead we are to sins, that doesn't bring about your righteousness. No, no matter how you can live a sinless life, that's no, that don't make you go to heaven. No. Only what Jesus Christ did is, is what... Because the things in your past are condemn you. Yeah. If that's the case. Now, you, let's say, for instance, you might live to be... Uh, 30 years old, and when you get 30, you know, then from then on, sin is no longer reigning in your life. You no longer sin. Well, what you did from 1 to 29 is what's going what's gonna to send you to the lake of fire. Because, yeah. see, nobody's born uh, in, in the righteousness of God. Nobody's born, you know, as a baby in the righteousness of God. No. And so uh, we have to look at uh, uh, our present-day situation um, and, what we're, and what we're in is where... Uh, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, came to this earth and died for us, it was for everything that we had done already. You see, it was for everything we had done. Now, we might have not been there physically, but all our sins were there on that cross. You see, and so that's what we have confidence in. That's what we rejoice in is Christ Jesus. Not about how good we act. Now, the Lord wants us to behave ourselves and want us to live righteous. You know, if we're righteous, we're going to be righteous and those things. But that's not where our confidence is. So you don't have to get, get on that roller coaster and you might have a good day today and, you know, you rejoice in the Lord and then tomorrow you, you might have a bad day or whatever the case is and it might seem like you failed the Lord. Well, that's, that's a roller coaster. And the Lord don't want us to be on that roller coaster. Yeah. We rejoice in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Verse 4 says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any... Other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Now what Paul is doing is a certain uh, how, he's, how he can have confidence in the flesh more than anybody else. Five, verse 5 says, Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. So what he's giving you is his background. Yeah. Verse 6 says, concerning, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So what Paul is saying, he was blameless in the law as, as far as natural man goes. He was blameless. As far as natural man goes, what he's saying is there was nobody else that was just as good as me. You couldn't get no better than what I was in the law. <laughs> Circumcised, they, they, everything he did was right in tune with the law. Yeah. Verse, now let's look at what verse 7 says. It says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Amen. In other words, what he's saying is all that stuff that I just named to you, how I was perfect in the law, how I kept all those days, how I did all of those things, I, I had to lose those things. He said those things were gained to me, but they were counted lost for Christ. So a person that is self-righteous, they'll receive the grace of God in vain because they believe that their righteousness is what make them good, put them in good standing with God. So what's the purpose of grace? Why is grace there if your righteousness is what make you, make you good in God's eyes? Verse 8 says, Yea, doubtless, 
and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Now this kind of coincides with what we had uh, preached uh, last week about only those that are born blind will see Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything, what he's saying is everything that I knew, everything that I kept, it was just dumb in this new thing. Regardless, it's kind of like uh, technology and things. You know, you might get a computer and you might have bought a computer 10 years ago where uh, the parts that you might buy today that won't fit into that computer. So it doesn't do you any good to have that computer. You see, it's just, it ain't, it's just for nothing now. And so this is the same way it is with our salvation. It's, uh, whatever we were doing to try to earn salvation and to try to earn our righteousness, it's, it doesn't mean anything in God's eyes. The only thing that caught in God's eyes is do we believe in His Son? Yeah. Verse 9 says, And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. <laughs> so he had his own righteousness at one time, so he thought. In the law. But that, that never brought him to Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ showed himself to him and, and, and uh, showed mercy to Paul, Paul had to forget everything he knew. He had to give up everything that he was ever taught to obtain the righteousness of God. Verse 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Now that's, that's what the key is. The power, now we'll never know the power of, of, of Jesus Christ's resurrection as long as we're trying to establish our own righteousness. Amen. We'll never know the power of that resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Verse 11 says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now here, I want to stop here for a second. Uh, the problem with having confidence in the flesh and not knowing uh, the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection is this, is that when you uh, are living this life for the Lord and uh, you're looking at your flesh and watching and seeing what it's done, doing and taking notes about, you know, where you've come up short at and things, you tend to live yes in the yesterday. Yeah. People that... Uh, 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 try to obtain righteousness through their flesh, they uh, have a hard time forgiving themselves, yeah. even though Jesus Christ have, and God have already forgiven them. Yeah. And so what you do is you live in yesterday. Yeah. And you, you, know, you say, well, Lord, I've, I've uh, you know, yesterday I've done this and done that. And you know, the devil, uh, he's the type of fella, he gets you in trouble. And then he goes to God and accuses you. Yeah. <laughs> And he never lets you get past yesterday. Man. What you did yesterday. And he got some relatives and some friends of yours that remind you of what you did yesterday. <laughs> and so you never, it seems like you can never get past that. And so you, you, you live today feeling sorry for what you did yesterday. Man. And as long as you're living like that, you'll never ever be able to grasp the whole of Jesus Christ. No. The devil know that. Now, we, if we look, just look at some men in the Bible, I mean, just most of the men in the Bible, if they'd have lived in yesterday, they'd have never got where God wanted them to be. Amen. If King David had never forgiven himself for having Uriah killed, getting his wife pregnant, and, 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 and killing her husband to cover it up, he'd have never become the man God wanted him to be. Yeah, no. If Peter hadn't forgiven himself for denying Jesus three times, and Jesus had already said what was going to happen to people that deny him, but if he hadn't forgiven himself for denying Jesus three times, he'd have never been able to be the shepherd that God wanted him to be over his flock. Amen. If Paul hadn't forgiven himself for persecuting the church and doing all those things that he did to the church, he'd have never been the apostle that we read about today. Amen. 
We have to uh, uh, learn to forgive ourselves for what we did yesterday. And not only forgive ourselves, but not dwell on it. If you dwell on those things that you did yesterday, you'll never grow. You, you'll be stuck in yesterday. And, so, and the devil knows that, and so he just keeps throwing yesterday in your face. Yeah. Well, yesterday you did this. But you know, every day that we wake up is a new day to serve the Lord. Yeah. Every day his grace is renewed for us. Yeah. And every day when I wake up, I pray and say, Lord, I, you know, I might have failed you yesterday. I've done some things that was against your word yesterday. But today is a new day. And help me to be a better man and a better servant of yours today than I was yesterday. Man. Help me to forgive myself for what I did yesterday. And help me to move on and to continue to grow in you. That's the only way we're going to continue to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Is by not looking at yesterday. Man. This is what Paul is talking about. I don't, Paul is saying, I don't think I've already apprehended. But this one thing I have, that's forgetting those things which were behind me. And pressing forward. And that's the only way uh, we'll know about the power of his resurrection. Amen. It's by pressing forward in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And, not, and not thinking about what we did yesterday. And not thinking about, you know, all of those things. That's the devil doing that. The devil want to keep, he's, that's his job is to accuse you. Yes. You show me somebody that has a guilt trip hung over their head. That can't forgive themselves for what they did yesterday. And don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ forgave them for yesterday. And I'll show you that same person to get stuck in what they were doing yesterday. Yeah. They'll continue to do those same things over and over. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So that's what the Lord wants us to do is press toward the mark. Yeah. Now, when you pressing, that's more than just, you know, that's, that takes more effort. Yes. Pressing. We have to press for that mark. Right. The devil ain't going to let that mark come easy. No. He's going to put up every roadblock he can. But if we continue to press for that mark, then we'll know the power of his resurrection. And we'll know what his resurrection represented. Right. He did more than just die for our sins, but he was raised again so that we can live a victorious life. Yeah. If you come back, if the Lord will, maybe next Sunday we'll uh, uh, talk a little bit more about this in the book of Romans. How we're yeah. buried with him in Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. But we're not only buried with him, but we're raised again in the yeah. same manner that he was raised. Yeah. What is that talking about? Our new life. That's not just talking about us dying and going to heaven. No. That's talking about our new life that we're supposed to be living right now. Yeah. Well, that's all I have for tonight.